are beso na ni e bi bona fun omo lu abi ozun olori ire ozun are mu ozun o ti so tun di tun tun o so gbodile o ta san doja o si sa wo yara olori ire omo are beso la le omo lu abi ozun nje sa be ni omo le obi temi gbo la o omo godo poro ni le mo yo le le loro ele fun mo kekeke 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 ni sa so lo de sa jo godo te ni asaso o nje sa e yi to Change. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News at 7. I am Ebulomo Adikunli. The former governor of Kaduna State, Balarabi Musa, has condemned the trend of impeachment of political office holders in the country. According to the political icon, who himself suffered impeachment from office as a governor in the Second Republic, the move is aimed at completely silencing the opposition. Well, it is something that has to happen because first, the party in power in government, the PDP, like its predecessor, is mindless, is adventurous, and they think they prevail like God. They will try anything. Now we are seeing impeachment of opposition political parties. But the PDP is so aggressive, so uh, uh, bankrupt, that it will even pursue the impeachment of PDP governors who don't toe the line of the party. The People's Democratic Party has reacted to a statement credited to the All Progressives Congress that the PDP is building a stomach infrastructure. APC accused the PDP of buying votes through the process. Frank Omalape has the details. Following the distribution of food items by the PDP during the equity election, the All Progressives Congress says it is a process of buying votes in disguise. The APC has accused the PDP of replicating the same vote buying process in Oshun. Some of the party's stalwarts reacted by saying governing people is all about meeting their basic need and not as the APC interpreted it. Look, Nigeria is in dire straits. That is the truth at all levels. So you need a government that's responsive to the needs, to the yearnings of the people. So when we talk about social infrastructure, the number one thing that an individual, when they wake up in their, in their homes in the morning, the first thing to think about is what are we going to eat today? Ekiti State Governor Elect of Fireshi accused APC of starting the process of what they call stomach infrastructure. You build structures for living people. They started the whole exercise of sharing money at the polls. It is their way, they are only blackmailing the PDP. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. How can a piece of meal take away your legitimacy? They are, they are time wasters. We should be, they should be ignored. According to the director of media for Missionary Campaign Organization, the candidate never bought a single item, saying it is an act of kindness from party faithfuls. You have seen boldly written APC rice. You have seen boldly written vote for Arabe rice. Have you ever seen one? By PDP. Instead, what you have seen is people giving us by your love missionary as small as it is biscuits, cola nuts, corn. This is a sign of acceptability. All parties do that. If anybody says it's only a PDP thing, they just kill themselves. They are they do it in one form or the other. At Ramadan, that we just attended Ramadan a few days ago. People do all kinds of things to families, to households. So you can give them some help. They need a lift. But what we need to do long term is we don't want to just give, give them something to eat. We also want to teach them how to, how to procure those things for themselves. Give, give them employment, employment opportunities. 
The battering and accusations traded between the PDP and APC has intensified since the AKT election. Efforts to win the Oshun governorship has increased as the election day draws near. Frank Omalape, OTV News, Ilefe. Still in Oshun State, the Independent National Electoral Commission has released the total number of registered voters. Women made up 53% of this number. Rashid Rashid has more. Women in Nigeria and the world over have been clamoring for equal representation in governance. The number of women as registered voters in the forthcoming Ashun governorship election has again raised agitations for more representative positions in government. The Yaludi of Oshoboland at Nikolade urged women to take up their responsibility and place of pride in politics. We are all women and we are mothers to members of all the political parties in the state. We belong to this state and we don't have any other state that we can call our own. Therefore, as mothers, we cannot sit back and watch and allow things to go the way we don't want. A frontline female politician in Oshun Sari Ulaoi laments the political short change experienced by women from their male counterparts. Women are not allowed to go into meetings at night. If there is a meeting scheduled for the have to do, which you do, immediately you leave there, they will call their carcass. The carcass will have to take some decisions which will be different from what you have done in the money or have to know. The director of Women Advocate Research and Documentation Center, Abiola Folabi, however, says the tide is set to change as women are ready to take the bull by the hand, particularly in documenting every promises made to them by politicians during campaigns. The essence of today is to bring people together to talk about the role women can play in ensuring that the August election is free and fair, and also to give an opportunity for women who might have been saying. Uh, people who are contesting for elections on the television to give them the opportunity to interface with them, the ask them questions, ask about their political the party, how they members. can be members of the political party, the and how members. the political party can be beneficial to women as a whole in the state. The forum was attended by chieftains of political parties seeking to woo the votes of women at the poll. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Oshobo. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, plans to set up an Ebola Solidarity Fund to ensure that all affected countries are supported to eradicate the disease. President of the ECOWAS Commission, Kadri Dazir Quadrago, disclosed this while receiving the Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, Zhu Xiaoji. He says the commission is cooperating with member states and international partners to stem the spread of the disease, which has so far claimed more than 720 lives out of over 1,000 cases reported in the region. The ECOWAS chief also informed the ambassador that the leaders of Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone would be meeting officials of the World Health Organization in Conakry, Guinea, to develop a comprehensive strategy and mechanism to silence the disease. Speaking after presenting his letters of credence to President Guadrago, Ambassador Xiaoji expressed China's sympathy and solidarity with ECOWAS and the affected member state. He also pledged his country's support in combating the outbreak. Meanwhile, World Health Organization head Margaret Chen says the Ebola outbreak in West Africa is spreading faster than efforts to control it. She says the failure to contain the spread of the disease can be catastrophic in terms of lives lost. Chen added that the virus, which has claimed 729 lives in four West African countries since February, could be stopped if well managed. Ebola kills up to 90% of those infected. It spreads by contact with infected blood, bodily fluids, organs, or contaminated environments. In a related issue, about 70 people are currently being tracked by the rapid response team due to their exposure to the Ebola patient that died in Lagos. The State Commissioner for Health, Jide Idris, made this disclosure at a media briefing. Abiola Oluwale's report is presented from a studio. 
The death of an Ebola victim in Lagos on July 25th has created panic among Nigerians on a possible outbreak of the deadly disease in the country. Speaking on the efforts of government to check the spread of the virus in the country, Jide Idris says an emergency operation center has been activated in Lagos in collaboration with the federal government and World Health Organization. The key activities of this center include, as an update, the establishment of an isolation unit in Lagos. This unit is a, is a standalone facility that has a one-way flow until the health worker is decontaminated. It has dedicated water, sewage and power supply. The healthcare workers associated with Lagos, this, as this facility, have received training on the provision of care to Ebola virus disease patients. Special emphasis of the training has also included the protection of patients and those who work with them through good clinical practice and infection prevention and control measures in the isolation unit. This type of training is planned to be replicated in other states as part of our preparedness plan. While affirming that the rapid response team is currently on contact tracing to ensure that all contacts exposed to the late Ebola victim are closely monitored. Aegis cautioned private mortuary operators from attending to corpses without certified death certificates. I really mean, support again all the private mortuaries in Lagos State. I think they need to be very careful now. Any case that has no death certificate or any social death certificate should not be handled by them. They should allow no rest. So many claimers already in the country, both orthodox and non orthodox uh, healthcare. Uh, providers claiming that they have cure for Ebola. So uh, the federal government and here state government, we want to declare that people, all Nigerians should, that are doing this should desist from doing this because Ebola is not HIV. Ebola is a killer. It will wipe out everybody if it comes to their home, the, the healing home, including those healing. The commissioner said suspected cases will continue to be monitored until the end of the incubation period of 21 days from their exposure to the traveler who was diagnosed with the Ebola virus disease. Lagos State's governor, Babatunde Fashola, has urged the federal government to shut down its borders with affected West African countries to prevent an outbreak of Ebola in the country. Fashola said Ebola is no longer a local problem, but an international one that requires urgent measures in place to prevent its spread. He said the disease is easily transmittable across the borders and boundaries. Fashola added that all residents who had contact with the dead Liberian had been tested and that the results were negative. The Nigerian authorities have placed 69 people under surveillance as part of steps to prevent the spread of Ebola virus in the country. Two persons have also been quarantined while all entry points remain on red alert. The government, however, insists that there is still no cause for concern. As of today, uh, 59 persons altogether are either under quarantine or under surveillance. Um, those who are going to attend the same meeting in Calabar uh, are all in Lagos under surveillance. All those who were in the same plane were going for that meeting. Actually, immediately the next day they had to be brought back um, through a special arrangement and brought back uh, to be under, so currently they are under surveillance. Uh, the staff or persons who took care of him before the diagnosis who may not have exercised all the necessary care are also presently under quarantine. So that is what we're doing and we said they will remain under this surveillance until a period of three weeks at least actually elapsed because three weeks is the maximum incubation period. So it's only three weeks from the date of contact that we can certify them after testing them as well as they are free of the disease. So um, that is the situation. 
so far, the Ministry of Health has not reported any additional infection anywhere in Nigeria apart from the person who came into the country and died. Um, so far, there has not been any reported fresh case of any infection. Uh, what the Ministry has stated clearly is that uh, every step is being taken uh, to control spread by ensuring that all people that had contact with the victim are monitored, quarantined, or surveilled to ensure that they also do not um, uh, spread the virus just in case they're infected. But at the moment, there has not been any single additional incident of infection that has been reported. And this is important because we are beginning to see some panic reports, particularly in the social media, uh, making all sorts of claims. And uh, this is important because for me and for all of us, the media must be extremely professional. It's the Core TV News at 7. Up next, Israel and MS have agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire in the Gaza conflict. Details of these and more after this break. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave it space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos brings a dog as all roots. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we host. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24 hour news station. Thank you for being there. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire in the Gaza conflict. United States Secretary of State Jen Kerry and the United Nations have announced. Kerry said the two sides would begin the truce at 8 a.m. local time and that Israelis and Palestinians would enter talks in Cairo. The top U.S. diplomat said the ceasefire would last for 72 hours unless extended. But Kerry warned that the ceasefire was not final. Israel and the Palestinian factions have agreed uh, that they are now prepared to implement a 72-hour unconditional humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, Israel will be able to uh, continue its defensive operations for those tunnels that are behind its lines, uh, and the Palestinians will be able to receive uh, food, medicine, uh, and additional uh, humanitarian assistance, as well as to be able to tend to their wounded, uh, bury their dead. This will last for 72 hours, three days, precious time. It is a lull of opportunity, a moment for uh, the sides, uh, the different factions to be able to come together with the State of Israel in an effort to try to address ways to find a sustainable ceasefire. For Gaza's troops, nearly 2 million residents, the damage to the Seoul power plant has worsened and already strangled infrastructure. Residents in need of medical care are the most affected. The report. 60-year-old Enam suffers from pulmonary fibrosis and depends on oxygen therapy to breathe. Ever since Gaza's Seoul power plant was knocked out of commission by Israeli shelling, she has no more electricity at home to run our medical devices. And the local hospital, which runs on generators, isn't an option either. When I go to the hospital, I don't find a place to sit to get oxygen. Where should I go? I don't know where to go. Her son says they can't afford to run their own generator. If I want to run the generator, I need one and a half liters of gasoline every hour. And she needs to have electricity for 17 hours a day. So the cost of gasoline wouldn't be less than about $45 a day. And we can't afford that. 
The Gaza power plant was hit several times by military strike. It's finally shut down after shells hit its fuel tanks, which erupted into massive fires. Technicians say it could take a year to repair the extensive damage, and Gaza can no longer depend on electricity from Israel. Power lines feeding the Gaza Strip with electricity from Israel were also bombed. And they're not back to normal yet because there's no coordination. Israel is waging war to destroy a network of tunnels in the Gaza Strip it says are used for attacks against the Jewish state. Smugglers have used those same tunnels to sneak petrol into the enclave blockaded by land, sea and air embargo. For the Strip's nearly 2 million residents, the damage to the power plant has only worsened what was already a strangled civilian infrastructure. And that wraps up a top on Core TV News at 7. Join me again at 9.45 for the primetime news. Thank you for watching. I am Ibn Lomo Adikunli.